Hey, what's up, you guys, and welcome to another episode of Bangers. We're doing milkshakes today. Um, if anybody is wondering if I'm only wearing my underwear, I am. Hey guys, so the first recipe I want to talk about tonight, and this was a promise made by me, you know, to a fellow mixer, um, is Golden Arches by Shindo. So, funny story, um, I had no clue what he meant by Golden Arches until I googled it, and I was like, ah, okay, McDonald's with its Golden Arches? Boom, penny drop, I'm down. But you know, the funny business is that um, when I tasted it, I hadn't Googled it yet. And the immediate thought I had was just like stock McDonald's chocolate milkshake. You know what I mean? What's really, let me share this recipe or just share it with you so you can see what I mean here, right? Uh, just wanna zoom it in a little bit. Okay, so Golden Arches Milkshake by Shindo. Guys, if you like Shindo just as a mixer, why don't you go ahead and hit the like button below. So what he describes, this is, all right, here we go, cap double cream, uh, a double chocolate V2, thanks Volker, turn out to be a pretty damn good chocolate. Yeah, straight up. We, I'm happy we have all figured this out now. Thank you very much, Falcott. The only issue is it gets a little bit, uh, you know, there's a little bit of fakeness ling lingering at the tail end. So Shindo says what he had to do is fix that, right? He did this with our cookies and cream, does a really good job of um, overpowering that powderiness um, or fakeness from uh, unauthentic chocolate. Um, and yeah, it's covered up 100%. So the next, uh, he said, are to thicken the chocolate up and overall, you know, give it a full body richness because the chocolate v uh, V2 cap double chocolate on its own is not that thick. Okay, so of course, he reached out for um, some dairy, which is VT Devon cream. It's basically, he says, the best concentrate to do that job. I agree, I agree. Um, after mixing that up as my control, I split it into many bottles. So he gives us a little bit of information about what he does. You know, he says there that he mixed it up, uh, a somewhat big batch, he splits it up into smaller batches, and then he starts uh, tinkering around with four or five variations at the same time, which is, you know, for any mixer that's new, if you don't know about that, you know, that's how uh, you create variations and ha that's how you do it a lot faster. Um, I use a uh, magnetic stirrer and I sit down for one day and I just go for it, you know, or two days and I keep my focus. Um, other people do this. They create one big batch, uh, split that up into many smaller batches and then start tinkering with those smaller batches. And, you know, ultimately what you're looking for is just one of those batches just really hitting the nail. And he talks here about um, one of those batches really hitting the nail. He removed banana and, you know, uh, with, uh, he was saying there with um, the yogurt, a flavor waste yogurt that he put in, it just really hit the nail. And yeah, I agree. He says also mix this up with sweetener because why milkshakes do need a little bit of sweetener. I agree with you there. Um, and I did that. I put in a little bit of Flavor West sweetener. Not much, just a little bit. Um, so he says also, feel free to throw things on top like banana mint, vanilla, strawberry, and peanut butter. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Special thanks to ML Nikon and Method One. So that's our own uh, Joel here from South Africa for tasting this recipe with me and Alfred Pudi for providing me with some great feedback. Roasted, dude. Roasted. Six and a half percent four concentrates, not using one single ice cream, and um, he nailed a milkshake. And you know, this is why uh, I like Shindo as a mixer. And um, this is 
just just shows you that he knows his flavors and you know it's not about skill it's about single flavor tasting it's about understanding flavors and food pairings you know somewhat and um, you know a lot of knowledge with uh, single flavor tasting uh, to be able to do something like this because many people will build a milkshake with you know at least six uh, five or six concentrates he manages to do this with four and a total flavoring of six and a half percent and it is full of flavor and super round um, and nice and thick it's a delicious milkshake well done shindo this gets a full banger for my two milkshake recipes i decided to look outside the box a little bit not go for the you know the typical strawberry milkshake chocolate milkshake uh, type of uh, conventional milkshake mixes that we see very often in vaping. Uh, instead I look for flavors that aren't, don't typically find their way into milkshake um, vapes and the first one that caught my eye was a recipe by JWD Man on all the flavors uh, called pineapple milkshake. Uh, let's just go through the recipe quickly. The pineapple note is created by 4.5% cap golden pineapple with 1.5% inner pineapple. The milkshake base underneath that is 2% TFA Bavarian cream, 3% TFA cheesecake graham crust, 2% FA meringue, and half a percent of TFA brown sugar. And then the whole thing is sweetened up with 1% TFA cotton candy. And then also to complement the pineapple, he's put in 2% of Loran banana cream. Now that was an interesting recipe for me. Firstly, um, the addition to the banana cream. Secondly, the use of TFA brown sugar. I mean, I would use that uh, or see that primarily as a bakery. And it's about, I'm not sure I've seen it used much in milkshakes. So I was interested to, to try it out. Now, the first thing when considering this uh, recipe is that um, it struck me that pineapple milkshake is something I've never had before. I mean, a, a quick Google search revealed that there are a lot of homemade recipes for pineapple milkshakes, but it's not something that you're going to find at a, a McDonald's or a Wimpy or a Milky Lane or whatever. <coughs> um, I'm not quite sure why that, why that should be. Um, you know, okay, pineapple is maybe not the best fruit to go with uh, with dairy but then I wouldn't think lime would be either and yet lime milkshakes are universally popular so not quite sure why pineapple hasn't found its way into milkshakes uh, especially considering there's so many pineapple smoothies but uh, it is what it is so anyway toasting the mix um, first up the problem was what I feared and kind of anticipated it and anticipated when I saw the recipe and that is that the, um, the cap golden pineapple is for me just too juicy it's too much pineapple juice not enough pineapple chunks and um, that unfortunately carries through into the, into the vape so what we left with is a mix that tastes like a shake that has had pineapple juice added to it so it's almost like you're getting a, a glass of milkshake with an inch of pineapple juice at the top of it um, the taste is 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 fine I think the balance between the the milkshake and the pineapple note is good the pineapple isn't overwhelming uh, it's not an authentic pineapple cap cap golden isn't isn't that close it's Got that kind of slightly fake uh, pineapple note to it, but it's not it's not overwhelming. It, it's layered in nicely into the um, <clears throat> into the milkshake base. But where the recipe falls a little bit short for me is in the the texture. It just does it reads as too wet for a shake. When I think shake, I want an an almost solid mix. It must be creamy. It must be thick. It must be rich. It must be smooth, uh, velvety. I'm not really looking for something that's wet and juicy and that unfortunately is what that cap uh, golden pineapple, pineapple, inner pineapple mix 
does is it tends to move a little bit more towards pineapple juice <coughs> than towards a pineapple shake. So uh, in overall terms, uh, the mix does succeed for me uh, in terms of the taste. I'm not getting much of that LA banana cream at all. I think it does back up the pineapple quite nicely, but it doesn't, it doesn't detract from it at all. I didn't really notice the brown sugar in the mix. Um, I'm not sure if it's adding, but it's, it's, it's not introducing an off note for me, so uh, I don't see it as a, as a problem. Uh, my main concern is just texturally. I, I think the idea of a pineapple milkshake is very interesting conceptually, simply because it's not a beverage that we find um, in great quantities commercially. We may get pineapple smoothies, but not pineapple milkshakes as such. So it's probably a very interesting and challenging profile to tackle for a mixer. And I think JWD Man has, has done a good job here. Uh, certainly taste wise I just think it's maybe not the right pineapple texturally I'm not sure what would be the right pineapple maybe something that's a bit more fleshy a bit less juicy um, but it's certainly a, <clears throat> a challenging profile and I did invite any of our viewers who have experience with mixing up a, a pineapple shake um, just to fill us in, you know, what pineapple did you use? What do you think is the best pineapple for this? How do you get it to be more of that sort of thick, creamy shake feeling rather than a, a fruit juice type of feeling? So, uh, yeah, interesting profile, something that you don't vape every day. They really, I think this was the only pineapple milkshake on, um, on ATF, so certainly an unusual mix. And I think the difficulty, the textural difficulty of it is possibly a reason why it's an unusual mix. Um, but uh, nevertheless, interesting to vape. And um, let's keep the conversation going below and just, just see if we can um, come up with some suggestions and ideas on, on how to improve what is taste-wise a, a good mix, but which could do with some help uh, texturally. Thank you. In the next recipe that we are going to chat about, chat about is um, Dank One's white chocolate milkshake recipe. Now, um, you know, for some time now, uh, I've kind of just stayed away from anything chocolate. Now I'm kind of rediscovering it. Um, white chocolate is a thing that I do like, I do enjoy. Uh, I have childhood memories, just like chilling on the couch, watching Sunday cartoons smashing a bar of white chocolate with my mother so yeah i'm down i'm down for some white chocolate um, and especially white chocolate milkshake i'm a big dank one fan so i was gonna give this a whirl you know um so let me just share this recipe with you guys so that you can see what i'm chatting about um so white chocolate milkshake by dank one um not much of a description thought i would do a take on my version of a chocolate milkshake. Boom, you know, so milk, uh, he goes in with malted milk, um, TFA, cap super sweet, vanilla bean ice cream, vanilla swirl, Vienna cream, and white chocolate. Now, of course, if you've got vanilla, uh, Vienna cream in there, this is a steeper. You can see here, this requires 14 days. Okay, so what my take is on this recipe is I feel the recipe is beautifully balanced. Um, you know, the, the cream and the chocolate just, they, they merge nicely together. Um, what I do feel is slightly missing, but this could just be a personal thing. It's just that uh, round thickness of a chocolate, which for some reason, the uh, vanilla bean ice cream is not, you know, in combination with vanilla swirl, it's just not hitting it for me. Um, so I think you know looking at an even thicker and a richer cream you know with this to just really add body to to this um recipe is going to do it absolute wonders but you know dank one is is one of my favorite mixes so you know for this mix um dank one did actually put out another mix unfortunately um on the thread that i put on mixologist on unfortunately i couldn't mix that up this is the only one i could mix up of of you dank one so that is my take on on this recipe um i think 
potentially look at the cream layer and see if you can, you know, find a thicker cream layer, you know, for this white chocolate to sort of like fuse into, you know, um, and just round it off. And the vanilla, uh, the vanilla in there is, is, is not a problem for me, but you do have two vanillas in there. And vanilla bean ice cream is already quite strong on vanilla. TFA uh, vanilla swirl, not that strong, but together at four and 2% does have a quite a prominent vanilla note. And um, that vanilla and white chocolate, it does distract me a little bit from the white chocolate. In here so and it's but it's not unpleasant um, this is a beautiful recipe I would recommend it to anybody that's interested in a white chocolate milk or milkshake kind of vibe um, this would be good you know this would be in your wheelhouse so yeah thank you so much Dank One um, first bump there uh, I, I dig mixing up your mixes so uh, keep putting them out for us cheers buddy For well, my second milkshake mix, I tried a white chocolate milkshake. Now, I mean, everybody loves chocolate milkshake, uh, but I haven't seen too many white chocolate milkshakes. Um, so this one caught my eye. It's by Dank One. We've covered him before on the mixer review. A very talented mixer, very tasty mixes. So I was really looking forward to this because the white chocolate that he uses, which is the TFA, is um, one of my favorite flavors I, I really enjoy this flavor i don't get pepper from it so um, i'm always keen to see recipes that use it so let's just go through the recipe the uh, milk track base is fairly standard two percent tfa malted milk four percent tfa vanilla bean ice cream two percent tfa vanilla swirl and 0.33 percent fa vienna cream um, i'm not sure what one third of a percent of vienna cream is is doing in there obviously dang one has his reasons for it but there's nothing that leaps out at me as to why Vienna has to be there in such a, a low concentration um, if you have um, an explanation for that dank one please um, fill us in and then of course the top note 3.75 percent uh, TFA white chocolate now this unlike the uh, pineapple box shake that I, I reviewed earlier is an obvious and natural fit. Um, white chocolate is essentially a thick, a very thick cream in, in, in vaping. It's, it's like a really dense um, a cream. So it's a natural fit with a, with a milkshake base. Um, although white chocolate milkshakes aren't that popular commercially, chocolate milkshakes certainly are, and white chocolate is just uh, a variation on that. So it's, it's a pretty standard um, idea. And of course, that, that white chocolate is just going to fit so well with a thick, rich milkshake base. And then it's going to add the flavor on top of that as well. So it's doing two things. It's helping the texture of the milkshake and it's helping the taste of the milkshake. Um, I was really looking forward to vaping this. And at first taste, um, all my um, expectations were confirmed. This is just a delightfully thick, rich sweet but not too sweet um, velvety luxurious tasty vape uh, what i'm getting from it it's almost like a thick milkshake base where you've taken melted white chocolate and sort of drizzled it in that it forms almost a, a swirl in the in the glass so it's like a really thick milkshake with kind of a slightly solid slightly more solid swirl of that of that white chocolate in there uh, it manifests very well in the vape as well what happens at the start of the exhale you start off with this rich um, sort of dairy uh, creaminess and then as the exhale carries on that chocolate just bleeds through and blends in and takes over with that uh, that sort of white cocoa um, uh, taste coming through so this, this is really in my wheelhouse. It's the type of, um, uh, of mix that I can vape all day. It's rich, but not too rich. Uh, it's very Moorish. I can, I can keep on, on vaping this. No off notes in it, no flavors in there. The only caveat I would give, obviously, if you the type of person who gets pepper uh, from the TFA vanilla uh, flavors uh, and 
white chocolate in particular, then obviously you're going to want to give this uh, a miss. I don't think it's going to come out quite the same with the flavor West white chocolate, which to me has quite a dark note in it. But I think if you are going to sub for this, maybe the Flavora white chocolate would be a good um, uh, a good bet to sub that. But uh, yeah, this mix wor works. That milkshake base is really good. It's thick, it's dense, it's creamy. The white chocolate just amps everything up a couple of notches on, on the dial. It adds in that, that delicious white chocolate flavor. It thickens up the milkshake. It makes it even richer and more velvety. Um, so yeah, a natural fit, uh, kind of a no-brainer of, of, of a mix. Um, milkshake base and white chocolate is just going to go together every time. So um, for Dank One, I was really close to giving this a full banger, but you know how rare that is with me. But very definitely a, <coughs> a very strong uh, tip of the banger for me. Thank you, Dank One. Hey guys, the final recipe that I want to chat about tonight is Fruit Loops Milkshake by Sam Kayla. So let me share that recipe so y'all can see it. Um, here it is. So Fruit Loops Milkshake by Sam Kayla. It's got one rating on it, five stars. Let's just jump right into it. So the description is, once I seen this Burger King Fruit Loops Milkshake, I knew that I wanted to go off that profile. This here is pretty simple profile, but it's delicious. Flavor West fruit rings create the Fruit Loops flavor and um, is the perfect choice for this mix. Uh, TFA Vanilla Bean Ice Cream and TFA Vanilla Swirl create the milkshake. TFA um, Toasted Marshmallow helps add a little malted flavor to the entire mix. And TFA Whipped Cream adds a nice, light, creamy whipped cream on top of the milkshake. Mix it up, leave your feedback. Thanks, dude, roast it. Thanks, Cam, uh, Sam Kayla. Um, yeah, it's a 15% mix, 5% uh, Flavor West Fruit Rings, 1.5% TPA uh, Toasted Marshmallow, 4% uh, Vanilla Bean Ice Cream, 1.5% uh, uh, TFA Vanilla Swirl, and 3% Vanilla Whipped Cream. So, dude, I dig this uh, milkshake layer. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? Um, this is a really good go-to milkshake um, uh, layer for anybody new looking to create um, a milkshake. So yeah, go and uh, go and check this layer out. The only thing with this is, you know, putting, there's a lot of creams in here. So Sam Kayla went in with 5% uh, uh, Flavor West fruit rings. And um, I think I have some kind of uh, sensitivity to fruit rings and fruit circles. It just, it's got that lemon pledge vibe to it, you know? And uh, that's distracting me from this, you know, this beautiful uh, milkshake layer that has been carefully thought out here, um, I feel. So um, yeah, that is probably something I would want to adjust a little bit or looking for, um, you know, another fruit uh, or another fruit circles or fruit loops type concentrate that's going to merge slightly better uh, with that cream layer. Because at the moment, it's just a whack of, of, um, of lemon. And, you know, then luckily I get a little bit of cream at the back, but I'm so distracted by just that zing of lemon, you know, on the side. Um, for me here, uh, because I really dig this milkshake layer uh, that Sam Kayla has created, I'm going to give this a uh, fist pump, boom, roasted. Thanks, Sam Kayla, for mixing this up. Keep on creating bougie milkshakes like this. Um, I'm following you as a mixer. Look at me following you. Boom. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of the show. A couple of things before we close off today. Now, uh, Philip, aka Kind Crown, unfortunately has been diagnosed with stage four esophageal cancer. So in the description below, the very first link is the GoFundMe page for Philip. There's going to be a stream. There's going to be goodies handed out. So keep your eyes on that and support, and, uh, support that GoFundMe, guys. Um, then I want to just shout out a couple of channels that uh, we collaborate with. And, you know, it's just pretty much our firm in the DIY community. Daytime Frank, uh, Fresh 03, 
DIY.under, Develop and Mix and Vixens. Guys, go check out those channels. Um, go and join them. Go and follow their content. Uh, Daytime Frank, DIY.under, both have a Facebook page as well. Go and check those out. You can pop those in the, in the chat if anybody from those teams are here. And then I'm going to share finally the Mixologist group, which is pretty much powered by TFV. This is a South African group, guys. Would be cool to have you there. Excuse me, there's many South Africans, there's many people, international people in that group. So yeah, pull in guys. It'll be cool to, to hang out with you guys and look at your recipes and you know, just helping out people looking for information. Cool guys, thank you so much for joining us and I uh, hope you guys have an awesome week. Cheers.